From Kern Government Television, welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting, originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 Truxton Avenue, Bakersfield, California. Kern County's vision is to create and maintain a customer-centered county government designed to garner the confidence, support, and trust of the people we serve. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Good morning, welcome to the Tuesday, June 26th meeting of the Kern County Board of Ju Supervisors. Uh, the board will reconvene. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we will begin our meeting with a salute to the flag, uh, and then uh, I'll ask you to stand in a moment for that, and then after we're done with the flag salute, could you please remain standing for a moment of prayer, silence, and meditation? I'd like us to remember this morning the loss of a former Kern County Supervisor and Mayor for the City of Bakersfield, Mary Kay Shell, whose funeral was just a couple of days ago. She was a fabulous person and a great servant to our community. So let's remember her as we do our moment of silence. Our flag salute this morning is going to be led by Leanne Cook, who is Chief of Staff for District 1 Supervisor Mick Leeson. Ms. Cook. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> We'll begin our morning with uh, our consent agenda. Consent items are considered to be routine by staff and are usually voted on all at once. They are indicated in the agenda with a CA above the item number. There are agendas, by the way, at the back of the room if you'd like to take a look uh, at one of those. Uh, I'll indicate what those consent items are here in just a moment. If you have a question about an item on consent, you can uh, come, I'll call for you to come forward in a moment and ask your question. And it'll be at the discretion of a member of the Board of Supervisors as to whether or not that item is pulled from the consent agenda. So beginning on page two of our agenda this morning, items one and two, and then items five through eight. On page three, all the items nine through 16. On page four, all the items 17 through 22. On page five, items 23 through 29. On page six, items 33 through 35, and then item 37. On page seven, all the items 38 through 44. On page eight, all the items 45 through 53. On page nine, 54 through 62. And on page 10, items 63 and 64. Are there any members of the public who have a question about any item that's on consent? I see a hand go up in the back. If anybody else has a question, would you make your way down to the front, please? <clears throat> Chairman, I was gonna ask if we could pull item one because I anticipated Ms. Keo would be here and it appears as though she's moving towards the podium. However, uh, you find appropriate to uh, handle number one, I would like to hear from Liz on it. Yes, Ms. Keo, please come forward. It's been a while, could you give us your name for the record, please? Yes, sir, I was gonna mention it's been a while. The supervisor is completely correct. That was my uh, intention, was to ask that you pull item number one so that I can speak to the uh, nomination. Okay. I'll make that motion, Chairman. Okay, so we'll, we'll, item number will be pulled. You can speak on that in just a few minutes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, we'll take it up in the order that it's on the agenda. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Are there any other members of the public that have a question about an item this morning? Okay, then I'll return to the board. Uh, Supervisor Perez has requested that item number one be pulled from the consent uh, vote. Our, uh, and I need to read into the record that I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to, um, I've lost the word, I'm going to abstain from item number 27 because of a potential source of income to my family. So item number 27 I will not be voting on. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, with item number 21 pulled, uh, item number one rather pulled, uh, is there a motion to proceed with the consent calendar? So moved. Is second. there a second? Please cast your votes. The motion is approved, all ayes. Thank you very much. Okay, let's proceed then with our, our agenda. Item number one is the item that has been pulled. It's an appointment of Neil Sanapa at, 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 as the at-large member of the Animal Services Commission. Term to expire February 28, 2021. Ms. Keo, I believe you have a question. Is there a staff member here who can uh, address the item for us? 
Ms. Keogh, go ahead. Good morning, Chair Maggard, honorable members of the board, Ms. Krause, Mr. Alsa, Mr. Nations. My name is Liz Keogh, K-E-O-G-H. I am a proud resident of the 5th District. And I am here to thank Supervisor Perez for her nomination of Ms. DeSanapa and to encourage the board to show their enthusiastic support for this nomination by voting unanimously. Mr. Sanaba has been active in the animal welfare activities in town for as long as I can remember. He is on the same page as the board and the director of animal services as a founder of No Kill Kern and you know that that's our goal, is to become No Kill by 2020. He has vast experience with clinics, vouchers, spay neuter, all that boots on the ground stuff. Uh, and he's been doing it for years. I think he will complement the areas of expertise that other commissioners have. Um, and I think this is a wonderful nomination. I want to thank my supervisor, thank the board, and I want to thank Neil for agreeing to serve because as you know, boards and commissions require time. It's a volunteer <coughs> position. Um, and I think we're very lucky to have him. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other Liz, members of the public? Chairman, I had punged in to speak, please. Okay. Thank Emperor you. Emperor. Ms. Keogh, come back down. I want to tell you something. As a longtime observer of the 5th District, I know you'll appreciate this. KCET in Los Angeles is doing a documentary here on the redistricting that just occurred through the Maldiv case. Yeah. So I was with them last night. We walked over to my childhood home, and my brother was standing outside, who I haven't seen in months. Oh. We walked up. The camera crew was there. They were catching these interactions. He asked me, how are things going at the county? We're catching up after a long time. He says to me, did you know the county does spay and neuter now? <laughs> and I thought of you, Liz. Your face came to mind because I thought it was so lovely that right here in the 5th District, uh, my brother is engaging in a service he would have never even known about before this incredible union of you and your army of activists and what we did and launched out of the 5th District. Oh, yes. uh, so he, I was happy that he was able to inform me what the county is doing. That's right. That, that's how you know information has penetrated, that a service is important, uh, that is being communicated. And I, I'm filled with gratitude uh, for you, for what you've done, for how you've pushed my office to be a leader, of course, uh, remarkable leadership by Supervisor Scrivener as well, as you know. Yes. But I thought you would appreciate that you may appear in the documentary on the, on the redistricting case uh, <laughs> as it implicated our spay and neuter efforts uh, beautifully and sort of magically. So uh, thank you, Liz, for all that you have done. And this is a great appointment. Thank you for showing him the ropes. Thank you, Supervisor. Are there any other members of the public who would like to make comment with regard to item number one this morning? No, City One. So we'll return to the board. Uh, item number one then is uh, uh, the recommended action is to make the appointment of Neil uh, Sanapa as the at-large member of Animal Services Commission. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All eyes. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is public presentations. We offer an opportunity for the public to speak to us this morning about any matter that's not on our agenda this morning. Are there any members of the public that would like to make comment to us? Good morning. We offer two minutes to each member. Uh, yeah. Please proceed. Just passing these to the public real fast.
You have two minutes, sir. Can you yeah. please give us your name for the record? Good morning. My name is TJ Esposito, businessman, taxpayer, father of five, and certified cannabis expert here in Kern County. For nearly a year, we have warned the public that one particular supervisor has an active and long-term relationship with some of the most notorious dispensary owners in town. Truth be told, this secret and nefarious relationship has festered for the last decade, maybe longer. Aside from all the circus theatrics surrounding cannabis in Kern County that have gone on inside this boardroom, what is happening today is truly tragic for our community. Another monopoly like Measure G, which was shot down by the courts and cost taxpayers millions, is being pushed on us again by you, Mr. Chairman. Today, I am providing the first set of evidence that shows Oildell pot shop owner Jennifer Romandia conveniently listed as a housewife in your campaign reports. Mike, this is a funder of your campaign for re-election and is spearheading the fundraising for your political projects in Oildell. These individuals are listed in the Kern County's EIR as pot shop stakeholders who we should add mysteriously appeared on the pot shop list after contributing to Mr. Maggard and reflection efforts, uh, re-election efforts in Oildell. Chairman, what happened between the time you angrily said medicinal marijuana patients urinate, defecate, and commit sexual acts around dispensaries? What changed your mind from the moment you called them criminals? Was it the advice of your cannabis consultant, Kim Schaefer, who was listed in your campaign reports as your campaign manager? And as a CPA, you should know the difference between a campaign manager and a web developer. We can no longer trust you to do the right thing, and we can no longer Mr. afford- Mr. your time has expired. Please have a seat. Okay, and the, all the Please evidence have a seat, is sir. listed right there, Mr. Maggard. Please have a seat, Mr. Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Uh, there have been allegations of this from time to time. Over it's right there on Please your have a seat, Mr. Esposito. If, if, you, if you don't comply, we'll have Check you removed from the room. Mr. Abbasi, please give us your name for the record. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is David Abbasi with the Central Valley Cannabis Association and Central Valley Citizens for Responsible Government. I'm here today to talk about the cannabis monopoly that you are putting forward. It was previously six, now it's seven dispensaries, and I know which seven dispensaries you have in mind. It's the ones that contributed to you. Uh, and now, as TJ has shared, we now have actual proof that Supervisor Mike Maggard has received contributions from a cannabis group. In fact, it says on his 460, Jennifer Romandia, who is the uh, manager and her husband is the CEO for The Crop, which is a dispensary, a medical marijuana dispensary in Oildale. This dispensary has provided proofs such as a seller's permit and a building lease. Green Cross Collective of North Bakersfield and Green Cross Collective of Kern County are two dispensaries that were established prior to this, prior to them, prior to moratoriums, and they showed more proof than just a seller's permit and a business license. But your planning department has not issued us a permit or an authorization here locally. So it shows that people are being selective here with choosing who gets to be on this list and who doesn't. We have had more proof provided and we are still waiting for uh, Lorelei Oviat, the planning director, to get back to us. She never did. Um, so now I'd like to also put this on the record, Mr. Maggard, proof that you, you've received money from a cannabis group. Also, why are you so intent on regulating? You know nothing about cannabis, admittedly. And here I am, not a certified expert, but an actual expert in cannabis and cannabis regulations. I've studied over a dozen uh, ordinances fr uh, in, from various cities and counties and know them inside and out. Uh, I ask that you add me to the subcommittee. Your own county council asked me, what's, is this type nine license in our ordinance? We have a petition we're circulating also, and our ordinance is more conservative. Somewhat, it's what you want, and Mr. Nations doesn't even know what a type nine license is. You guys aren't up to date on Mr. what Bossy, the, 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 the state Please regulations are. So I Mr. demand Bossy, that you your add me to the, um, to the committee. Mr. Bossy, if you do not stop your comments, we'll have you removed from the room. Your time, time is, is up, expired, Mr. Sir. Maggard. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak this morning about an item not otherwise on our agenda? 
As much as these allegations have been made, there is no proof that there is a conflict because there is no conflict. It's been uh, investigated by the district attorney's office and I look forward to their report as to what they find. Yes, could you please give us your name for the record? Good morning, my name is Kate Yusey and I'm with the ADA KC. Good morning, Mr. Chairman morning. and members of the board. <clears throat> On a happy note, I'm here to tell something different. Um, in our community, uh, we have over 11,000 people that have been affected by Alzheimer's or dementia. We have a caregivers, a free caregivers seminar on Saturday at Hodel's, and I'd like each of you to have a flyer and please um, help us spread the word as our community has built a absolutely beautiful building on the corner of Buena Vista and Campus Park. We urge all caregivers to come and get the free support that they need in our community to help them along the journey. I also would like to introduce you to Becca Montoya. She's my new marketing and salesperson, so she probably will be coming to see each and every one of you eventually. And again, we invite you all to attend any of our events. And thank you very much for your support of ADA KC and all the nonprofits in our community. We could not do what we do without your support. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for the update. Any other members of the public wish to talk to us about an item not otherwise on our agenda this morning? Good morning, could you give us your name for the record? My name is Chad Garcia. I'm a combat vet. Served in the U.S. Army from 2001-2014. This is the, uh, it's my medication that the VA gives me. Each medication has a side effect. I had to dig this out. I haven't taken it in about three years, which coincides with the date that I quit drinking alcohol. In regards to the politics of cannabis and whatnot, I, I'd rather not speak on that. I just want to speak on behalf of my experience. This is probably my first public admittance that I've been using cannabis, medicinal cannabis, for about three years now. In that time, I've developed a successful radio career. I have been involved in my community, been active in helping my community with suicide awareness, with veteran advocacy. Cannabis has changed my life for the better when used properly. And I'm all for regulation, and I'm all for veterans having the choice to not carry around bags like this each medication with the side effect, making them feel not like the man that wore the uniform. I don't know what just went on, but I will tell you this. This, product, this substance works when used correctly. It's not a drug. I don't defecate anywhere except inside my home. I don't do any kind of vile acts in front of anybody. I simply want to be a contributing member to my community which I think I've proven. Actions speak louder than words. And I know that the conversation is going to continue until November. And rather than everybody think that the argument is about what just happened, I want you all to hear it from me. I don't carry this around anymore. I use this substance correctly. There's people in this room standing behind me who know me and who know how serious I am about different advocacy programs I'm involved in. And without cannabis in my life, taking away that pain, the anxiety, I don't think I'd be able to be the man standing here today. Thank you all for serving our, our community, and thank you everybody for coming today. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak to us this, this morning about any items not otherwise on our agenda? Yes, Supervisor Gleason. Thank you, uh, Mr. Garcia, thank you for coming in. Uh, I want to assure you that the previous persons talking had no impact on my commitment to uh, focus a capability so that can support people like you who are in need of, um, of that assistance. And I think uh, we're going to work hard to make sure that you have that. The focus is on you, sir, not on those other folks. Thank you. Okay, let's return to the board then. Do any members of the board have a um, report or a comment they'd like to make before we proceed with this morning's proceedings? Don't see anyone, so let's proceed now on to item number 30 on page five of our agenda. It is the proposed preliminary recommended budget for the fiscal year 2018-2019. Mr. Alsop, are you going to begin this discussion? Yes, sir, good morning, uh, Chairman Maggard and members of the board. Uh, this morning, we're before you to recommend a preliminary fiscal year 2018-19 county budget, which is essentially a placeholder budget. While your board considers action on a final county budget in late August, there'll be a number of uh, public comment periods and, and meetings uh, between now and then, and Nancy will 
I'm sorry, Ms. Lawson, uh, our assistant CAO will discuss that in her comments. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Lawson and her entire budget team uh, in my office for all the great work that they do uh, putting the budget together. Um, this recommended budget continues to address the structural deficit in the county's general fund that began in uh, FY 16-17, resulting in a severe decline in property tax revenue related to oil and gas properties. The initial $44.5 million deficit in the county's general fund is now projected to be $18.8 million uh, in fiscal year 18-19. We're also utilizing $6 million less in county reserves than was initially planned. While costs related to maintaining effective countywide operational and staffing levels for our sheriff's department, along with the cost of other critical public safety services such as fire, are challenging our efforts to resolve the deficit. Progress continues to be made and your board's four-year deficit mitigation plan remains on target. The cooperative spirit of your department heads, their leadership and the hard work of their staff to be innovative and more efficient has been critical to the success of our deficit mitigation plan for the general fund. The budget re uh, recommendation before you prioritizes community safety by maintaining sheriff's department and fire department operations and staffing levels countywide. While most county departments are taking a 2.5% reduction in funding this year, critical public safety departments like the sheriff's department and fire departments were backfilled with one-time county reserves to maintain operational efficacy. The cost associated with both of these critical safety services continues to rise, again challenging our efforts to address deficits and to maintain service levels in other critical service areas of the county. This recommendation proposes no reductions in operations or services for the Sheriff's Department. It fully funds a third consecutive Sheriff's Training Academy in just the last two years, helping put more deputies on the streets and communities across our county. And it considers efforts underway to address recruitment and retention challenges within the department. This recommendation maintains fire department service levels countywide and fully funds all firefighter positions, all fire stations, and proposes no reductions in operations or services for the third consecutive year. This budget continues to prioritize quality, safe recreational opportunities for county residents through improvement of our parks. It provides substantial new funding for improvement of county roads and expansion of mental health and substance abuse programs. It maintains library services at current year hours of operation, and it fully maintains operations and staffing levels for our animal services department countywide, including funding for spay and neuter programs. Additionally and importantly, this budget recommendation continues progress toward resolving the structural deficit. It avoids layoffs and supports the launch current efforts to promote efficiencies and savings uh, in our countywide Lean Six Sigma effort, which is ongoing. While the fire department's budget for 2018-19 is balanced, the department continues to be challenged with a structural deficit that is estimated today at seven and a half million. And that number will depend on year-end revenue, revenue collections. Uh, it's likely to change. Your general fund is contributing 6.1 today 6.1 million dollars in one-time reserves toward that deficit to address rising personnel costs associated to recent pension cost escalation for our firefighters. To resolve the fire fund structural deficit and its reliance on general fund resources for a bailout, it is imperative that ongoing cost reductions and or sustainable and steady revenue be identified immediately. Implementation of recommendations provided by recent operational analysis, your board order of our fire department is crucial. And the county's fire chief and his leadership team uh, with regular reporting to my office and your board on the progress of that, uh, those recommendations must be pursued with vigor. It is recommended that the county's fire chief in full cooperation with my office develop a mitigation plan to address the department's deficit that incorporates these recommendations. 
Concurrently, my office, along with the county's fire chief, will continue to engage the fire department's employee union in an effort to negotiate long-term cost savings, principally the elimination of all overpayments in overtime paid to our firefighters. The county currently pays overtime at a rate over and above what is required under federal law. To be clear, with this change we are seeking, our firefighters would continue to earn significant overtime pay. It's part of the job. Uh, in many cases, uh, overtime paid out to our firefighters is uh, over 100% of their base pay. Uh, that will continue. We are simply seeking to eliminate a very small percentage that is paid out beyond what is required under federal law that would give us substantial year-over-year -year savings uh, in our fire fund, and it's needed. Again, we have many challenges, but we continue to make progress in addressing the general fund deficit while also delivering on crucial public safety service priorities. My office will continue to be guided by three very specific countywide strategic initiatives in the work that we do. Uh, we will enhance the quality of life uh, for Kern County residents, folks that we serve. Uh, we'll become a model of excellence in managing our business and our people, and we are fostering a culture of innovation here at the county. All of our decisions are currently guided by those three objectives. We will continue to practice restrictive hiring of staff throughout the county, along with employing our strategy of hiring from within in an effort to achieve year-over-year -year cost savings. We will be fully committed to, uh, to our launch current initiative, applying the principles of Lean Six Sigma to the work that we do everywhere in the county in order to streamline processes, bolster efficiency, and to achieve significant cost savings. We have begun discussions with our labor partners on meaningful changes to how the county provides health care benefits to our employees, changes that have the potential to produce millions of dollars in savings annually over the next few years, while maintaining options, the level of care, and positive health outcomes that all of our employees deserve and expect. We will continue to make decisions that strengthen the county's overall long-term fiscal position whether that is with external stakeholders or with our labor partners. And with that, uh, thank you for your consideration this morning. I'll hand it over to our Assistant Chief Administrative Officer, Nancy Lawson. Good morning, Mr. Chairman morning. and members of the board. Uh, we are pleased to present to you uh, balanced preliminary recommended budgets for both the general and fire funds. Today is the first of four public meetings to discuss the 2018-19 county budget. The total preliminary county budget is $2.6 billion. The general fund budget, which is the main operating funded fund of the county, totals $771 million. The county fire fund budget totals $145 million. The combined updated structural deficit for these two funds totals $26.3 million, which represents a 58% resolve of the county's deficit to date. You may recall that the preliminary document before you today is not intended to be modified as it is temporary until the budget is adopted in uh, August. Our office will incorporate any board direction received today in the final recommended budget to, to be presented in August. The budget will also be revised for budget hearings to account for final 2017-18 year-end fund balances and the assessor's final assessment rule. The net general fund cost allocation to departments is $364 million or 2.15% more than last fiscal year. This increase is primarily attributed to pension cost increases for safety employees and increased medical and mental health services costs for the new justice facility. In addition to $6.5 million in NGFC reductions for departments this year, this next year it is estimated that another $10 million in net fund balance carry forward and $10 million in designations will be needed towards operations to preserve essential public services. While the ongoing structural deficit is projected at $26.3 million, the mitigation plan approved by your board in fiscal year 16-17 continues to make progress towards resolve. 
Current reserves total $144 million. The projected use of reserves over the four-year plan is currently $44 million, which, as Mr. Alsop mentioned earlier, is nearly $6 million less than we originally estimated at the start of the mitigation plan. Property tax revenue for the general fund is estimated to increase by nearly $7 million. The increase is largely contributing to balancing the budget with less use of general fund reserves. In January, using a $63 per barrel price of oil, the assessor projected a potential increase in oil and gas assessments by 3.3%. The assessor staff is working diligently to close the roll by June 30th. It is important to note that the preliminary budget does not include any allocation to major maintenance or capital projects. Staff are prioritizing critical needs that will be assessed after year end when we know the final fund balance carry forward available to allocate to those needs. The next public meeting to discuss the fiscal year 18-19 budget is scheduled for Monday, July 23rd at 6 p.m. in the evening here in the board chambers to hear public comment. Then again, Tuesday, July 24th, and finally, budget hearings will commence on Tuesday, August 28th at 9 a.m. The re recommendation for this item is to approve the preliminary recommended budget for fiscal year 18-19 as presented. That concludes our prepared comments, and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. Do any members of the board have a question or a comment before we go to the public? Okay, are there any members of the public who would like to make comment to us this morning about any, uh, about this matter that uh, is before us, this uh, budget report? How many people would like to make comment? We have a interpreter here who can speak Spanish. Would that be helpful? Yes, thank you so much. Mr. Alsop, uh, I believe that is uh, Maria Olvera. Is Ms. Olvera handy? Ms. Olvera, could you please come forward and explain on the microphone that uh, we're offering an opportunity for the public to make comment about the budget report? Hold on just a second, Ms. Olvera. I don't think it's working. It's, I don't think it's still working. Would you, why don't you just come to the other microphone and we'll get that microphone working for you in just a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Si me pueden escuchar? Okay. Se está ofreciendo una oportunidad para que el público pase y dé su opinión sobre estos um, puntos que estuvieron tocando. Y si alguien necesita un intérprete, aquí estoy disponible para ustedes. Mi nombre es María Olvera. Thank you, Ms. Olvera. Sir, would you like us to use an interpreter for you? Uh, I'm okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Could you please give us your, your name for the record and proceed? Gustavo Aguirre. And I just want to thank uh, Supervisor Perez for all these years uh, supporting uh, her uh, District 5 and all the agencies at the county for uh, being willing to meet with uh, the community groups, including Ms. Mr. Uh, Alsop and Lorelei, you know, all the agencies. Um, about the, the budget, um, we, you know, we know and we heard that uh, over 50% of the general fund uh, uh, goes to sheriff uh, or uh, safety, mainly for sheriff, and we heard this morning that, you know, trying, sheriff is trying to increase that. And for the community, we see that uh, safety not only comes in the form of uh, sheriff, but there are other ways that uh, uh, can a community uh, be more uh, safer, like, you know, uh, streets, lights, a good parks with lights, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of other uh, pieces that other, uh, other people are, and residents are going to do that. But we want uh, you, the supervisors, to consider that. I think uh, a shift of uh, how the money is used at the county need to start uh, uh, moving that way that, uh, you know, safety is not only sheriff. Yes, we need sheriff, but we need uh, to improve uh, and invest in our communities to switch that. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the community vision uh, that uh, we put it together. We are going to share with you the document. And it's coming from uh, several communities throughout the, the county. Um, and I know, uh, Mr. Couch, you were on one of our meetings with uh, Mr. Alsop. Uh, you may have a copy. If not, we are going to share one with you. But we really ask you to consider that. Uh, we understand, you know, that the budget is tight, but uh, we don't want to, you to spend extra money or, you know, being more debt, but, you know, switching those funds that the county have. So 
the, the safety of our communities is more, more sustainable, not based on sheriff, but based on the infrastructure that the communities have. And I'm going to share some of the documents uh, uh, for you, uh, and we hope that you know uh, all the, the supervisors and and the agents will continue uh, collaborating with us, uh, you know, so the community and residents can have the opportunity to share, you know, their vision of how the the county monies uh, shall be uh, invested in the county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aguirre. Who would be next? Would you like the use of an interpreter, sir? No, thank you. Okay. Please give us your name for the record. Uh, my name is Cesar Aguirre. I am a community organizer with the Central California Environmental Justice Network. Uh, I'm here to kind of reflect and also make similar asks. Um, like uh, Gustavo stated, we want not to increase money, but to reallocate the money so it's more equitably spread out. And the focus is on more of the people that need it rather than the people that expect it. Um, because they have been receiving it. Uh, my ask is that uh, we invest that at least a minimum of 75% of the two million allocated in the 2017 fiscal year uh, directly to disadvantaged communities as uh, chosen by the California Virus Screen 3.0 and also uh, communities within a half mile area of that. Um, and this number is to address the the way it has been unequitably spread in the last 10 years, 63% uh, of those funds have been given to parks within, uh, to regional parks or uh, parks within city limits. And uh, uh, more rural communities have expressed things uh, that their parks are in need. And I have a small list of things that they have prioritized and w would like to see in their parks. Um, the list includes prioritizing park maintenance, lights in public spaces, soccer facilities and programs, youth and senior recreational programs, job training and mentoring programs, and community centers that can uh, accommodate these activities. Like I said, this isn't uh, something that we want to increase money for. We just want to more fairly reallocate the monies so that the areas that have seen this uh, and enjoy these type of services can share that with the areas that have never seen this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Couch. Was, was your last name Aguirre, sir? Yes. yes. Thank you. Good morning. Ho hold on just a second, ma'am, okay? Um, Mr. Mr. Cesar Aguirre, did you have a document you wanted to give us? No. No? Okay. Uh, what my asks were part of the documents that were previously given. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, ma'am, go ahead. Um, good morning, Supervisors. My name is Adi Inka Glover, and I am at, with Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability. Um, our second ask is that beginning fiscal year 2018, the county should dedicate at minimum 75% of the parks and recreation funding towards community parks and recreation activities, maintenance, staff, operation in the most disadvantaged communities. Making this commitment in the 2018 fiscal year budget will mark a significant shift towards reversing impacts of the lack of infrastructure in parks and recreation investments seen by these communities over the past decade and even earlier. Park space and recreation programs are an example of an important community asset that contributes to happier, healthier, and safer communities. For example, well-maintained and operated park amenities provide families with low-cost options for physical activity and provide positive options for youth development. Ultimately, an investment like this will directly combat neglect that has contributed to criminal activity in such public spaces. There is a direct correlation in more investment in these communities, ultimately leading to safer communities. We as organizations working directly with residents are more than happy to work with um, county staff to see that these investments take place. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Olvera, would you please announce to the public that if anybody that wants to make comment needs the use of an interpreter for them to tell you that as they go by? So I won't have to ask every person. Todas las personas que están aquí para hacer un comentario y que necesiten un intérprete pueden usar un intérprete y tienen que usar un intérprete. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. you okay? Okay. Could you please give us your name and proceed? Good morning, supervisors and chairman. My name is Chelsea Tu. Last name is T U. 
I'm with the Center on Race, Poverty, and the Environment. I'm here to talk to you about recommendation number three on our budget platform. Um, another basic community asset that many low-income communities and as well as unincorporated communities in Kern County do not have and urgently need. I'm talking about paving streets in unincorporated areas outside of Delano on Lido Avenue, as well as basic crosswalks and lights that children need in order to get to their home safely at night in South Kern. Despite many decades of never seeing any basic street infrastructure and complete streets investments in their communities, we've seen that Kern County has spent over 80% of its roads and streets funding on paving streets within city boundaries. In the recent proposed budget that was just released, the Roads Division is also proposing to spend $3.6 million of the um, multiple millions of dollars coming from SB1 on 22 new vehicles and other costly equipment. I want to take this moment to ask you to reflect on what $3.6 million would mean for a low-income community in an unincorporated area breathing pollution just to have a crosswalk or a light or a bicycle lane so that families can go to dinner with, um, in, in their grandmother's home without fearing that somebody might have been struck by a fast-moving car, as there are many in Kern County, versus purchasing new vehicles um, for Roads Division staff and how to balance that. So in our, in our research as well, we found that it's been very difficult to not only see a transparent list of roads and streets spending, um, and as well as an, any methodology in how the division spends money. We've been in many conversations with the roads division as well as other a, a county staff on wanting to increase the transparency as well as the public accountability and also create a methodology for, for spending roads and streets money in an equitable way, as my colleagues have discussed. So in summary, we'd like to continue working with you starting this fiscal year to address the inequities that low-income communities and unincorporated communities in Kern County face. We request that the county dedicate a meaningful portion of the roads and streets budget towards building and maintaining street infrastructure in the most underserved communities. Thank you for your time. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Couch. Ms. Tu, would you mind providing your contact information to um, Mr. Alsa right here? I would like to talk to you specifically about uh, Lytle Avenue that you mentioned. Great, thank you. Thank you. Could you please give us your name for the record and proceed? Yes, good morning. My name is Patricia Leal, L-E-A-L, and I'm with Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability. Uh, good morning, thank you again for allowing us to make public comments. Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability, we've been here numerous times. Um, we work directly with community residents uh, South Kern, which include Greenfield, Rexland, Lamont, um, and unincorporated area of Arvin and surrounding areas. And along with building healthy communities, Comunidades Unidas, we are a collaborative that directly looks at the budget amongst other things like the general plan, the regional transportation plan, plans that really impact our community and growth and investments. And part of our comments today, it's um, based on priorities from community residents we work directly with, along with um, organizations like Advancement Project, which is an organization that focuses on doing budget analysis, and this is where our comments are coming from. Um, and we welcome working with the different departments, uh, along with Ryan, uh, the CAO, to continue to invest in the priorities that community residents continue to highlight. And on the budget platform that you have in front, um, well, before I go into that, um, after me, community residents from the communities we work with will make comments based on their specific needs. And I really do hope that you all really 
listen carefully in regards to what their priorities are because you as our representatives have that power and have that moral duty to really invest in the priorities that your constituents are asking and demanding for. In front of you, you have a budget platform. That budget platform, um, I'll be speaking on item number four. And item number four really looks into the flooding issue um, in our communities like Lamont, Weed Patch, and Arvin. Um, we, are, we are aware that the county did a, a feasibility study, the Caliente Creek study last year. And we thank, for, we thank the county for, for taking that time to really look into that issue and problem. We also understand that the flooding, um, the Caliente Creek study, um, in order to implement it, it's very costly. And we hear the county on that end. We hear that it's very costly, but what can we do together to, to work towards making that cost um, feasible? We thank Leticia Perez for working with outside sources to try to bring in funds to really look into that flooding issue. But we also demand, based on item number four, that the county allocate funds set aside on a yearly annual basis to be able to get to that cost feasibility and be able to, to really look at a feasible solution long term. We understand this is not going to come next year or this is going to be a solution within the next couple of years. But we wa what we want to see is that the Board of Supervisors along with planning with the different departments are we're working together to make sure that we're allocating funds for this long term solution for flooding issues that communities like Lamont and Arvin and Weed Patch face whenever there's a rainy season. So it's not, it, it's not, it's not a problem that we're able to estimate when a rainy season will come, but these impacts really affect students and community residents. Just two years, ago, last year, students weren't able to go to school because it was flooded. Buses and cars weren't able to cross and take students to school. When you're having these issues and no money is being set aside for these priorities, it really taps into the values and morals and priorities of community residents. Are they really being heard? And that's what we're asking here today. And this is why we ask that you really take into consideration our comments and we would like to see them reflected on this yearly budget. And we understand that these solutions will not come in one year, but we really do hope that we continue this conversation and we start now. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please give us your name for the record and proceed? Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Saul Ruiz. Soy presidente del Comité de Los Gil en Acción y vengo a representar mi comunidad. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? Saúl Ruiz. Okay. My name is Saúl Ruiz. I'm the representative of Los Gil's resident um, community vision for safety. I think, ¿verdad? Y vengo a hacer peticiones para residentes de Los Gil que se dediquen fondos en el presupuesto de 2018-2019 al condado de Ken para ayudar a nuestras necesidades de nuestra comunidad. Okay, and I'm here to ask that funding is set aside to assist the residents of Los Angeles and uh, in the 2018-19 budget. Para poner señalamientos de alto de tráfico. To put in place um, signal lights. Para luces en las calles. For street lighting. Para que se levante la basura adecuadamente. So that our waste is picked up pa regularly. Para la limpieza de calles ahora solo usan sopladoras y capsan mucho polvo y contaminación. When they clean the streets, they use blowers and it causes dust to pick up and it contributes to the contamination. Para un puente peatonal y estu para estudiantes cerca de la escuela para cruzar la carretera 46. Okay, to put in place the bridge to help um, pedestrians and students to cross uh, from school on road 46. Para parques seguros, no alcohol y no juego de apuestas. For safe Parks, no alcohol, and no gambling. Es todo, gracias. 
That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Could you please give us your name for the record and proceed? Su nombre, por favor. Buenos días. Uh, mi nombre es Diana Mireles. Uh, soy miembro del Comité Progreso de la MON. Good morning. My name is Mayra Mireles. I'm part of the Committee of um, Progreso in La Mont. Um, uh, hoy en este día estoy porque quiero que parte del dinero. Mm, I'm here today because I would like part of the funding. Uh, se ha uh, invertido en las comunidades en, des en desventaja. Would be allocated in, in parts where there's this advantage. Uh, por ejemplo, mi comunidad. For example, my community. Necesitamos uh, más uh, mejoras en los parques. We need betterment in, in our parks. Necesitamos como algo recreacional para los jóvenes. We need recreational activities for our youth. Uh, no se asusten, no estoy pidiendo un Six Flag. <laughs> Don't be scared, I'm not asking for Six Flags. <laughs> Pedimos como una spray park. We were asking for a spray park. Uh, unas canchas de football, soccer. Soccer fields. Um, necesitamos uh, parte de lo que nosotros decimos la seguridad. And part of what we're talking about is safety. No es nada más los sheriffs. It's not just the sheriff department. Pero necesitamos más alumbramiento en las calles. But we need more lightning in our streets. Pensamos que eso va a evitar un poco el vandalismo. We think that's going to prevent, help prevent vandalism. Um, y necesitamos, como les mencioné antes, es uh, como el soccer field y el spray park. So therefore, we need more parks and soccer fields the, the spray park. Para que así los jóvenes tengan algo en que entretenerse. That way, the youth has something to keep their time with. Uh, otra preocupación en La Mon. Other worry in El Mon. Es, son las calles. Is the streets. Uh, están, no necesitamos nada más que tapen el hoyo. We would like the, the the holes in the streets to be covered. Uh, uh, si nada más los tapan, al día siguiente ya está otra vez ahí. So we need more than just covering holes. They need to be repaired. Yeah, so the, por, they would be, they cover them and the next day they're open again. Yeah, porque eso no nos va a solucionar. Las calles están demasiado uh, partidas ya. Because covering the holes is not gonna solve the problem the streets in Lamont are already cracked. Yeah. Uh, quiero agradecer a la supervisora Leticia Perez. I would like to thank Leticia Perez. Uh, Ryan, also. Uh, Ryan. Uh, Loreline no está aquí presente. Loreline is not present. Yolanda Alcantar. Oh, oh I'm Yolanda, sorry. <laughs> Yolanda Alcantar. Uh, y además está que ha trabajado con nosotros como comunidad. And other staff that has worked with us as a community. Porque se sientan y escuchan nuestras necesidades. Because they sit and listen to our needs. Y como les dije una vez, nosotros comunidad, como comunidad. And as I said before, as a community. Estamos aquí para ayudar también. We are here to help also. Tocando puertas, uh, hablando con la comunidad, lo que Knocking se on doors, talking to the community, whatever is needed. Un comentario a lo mejor fuera de lo común. A comment maybe out of order. Um, yo les pido que yo sé que vienen las próximas elecciones. I know that um, the next elections are coming up. Por favor, no, no busquen votos. Please do not look for votes. Busquen la confianza de nosotros. Look for our trust. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment this morning? How many more would like to talk regarding this item? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, very good. Could you make your way down to the front, please? Venga aquí, por favor. You need an interpreter. No, I speak English. Good afternoon, sir. Could you get, or good morning. Could you give us your name and proceed? Thank, uh, thank you, board, for having me here. My name is Tim Prado. I'm a resident of Le Mans. I'm a member of Comité Progreso de Le Mans. I'm here to ask you to, before you approve this financial 
document. And it's necessary to look at the needs of the community. One of the needs that we need is investing in infrastructure in the roads due to flooding. Last year and the previous year with the storms, our community was basically cut off the main route to get to Bakersfield. This also affected in affected mass transit to Lamont from Bakersfield. Most of the members in our community use mass transit to get to their doctor appointments here in Bakersfield. Without mass transit, they are not allowed to come. These, uh, this is a disadvantage to our community. And we're just asking before you pass or approve to look into investing into both flooding flooding prevention and also infrastructure due to mass transit. Because basically what was happening, members of the community, the routes were closed due to that, they would have to walk several miles to Fairfax Road, which is the nearing road, to help the bus to come to Bakersfield. That is unfair to them. When the routes and the stops are dedicated on their roads, they shouldn't be able to have to move to take another road to come to Bakersfield. And I'm just asking to look into investing in both flooding prevention and also infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Prado. Good morning. Buenos días. Good morning. Mi nombre es Estela Escoto. My name is Estela Escoto. Eh, soy miembro del Comité para un Mejor Arvin. I'm a member of the Committee for a Better Arvin. Estoy aquí porque la comunidad de Arvin está contenta. I'm here because our community in Arvin is happy. Porque después de tantos años llegaron a un arreglo, a un acuerdo, eh, la ciudad de Arvin y el condado. Because after many years, um, the city of Arvin and the county came to an agreement. Para arreglar la calle Comanche. To fix the Comanche Road. Y les quiero pedir también por las calles que se están inundando y que nos afectan. And I want to also ask you for, and beg you for the streets that are flooding and they're not being fixed. Alamón y Arvin. Lamont and Arvin. Para nuestra comunidad, varias calles ocupan para ir a su trabajo. To our community, it's very important because we need those roads to get to work. Y principalmente la Edison. Especially Edison. Es una de las que se inundan cada it's vez de que hay lluvia. One of the roads that floods whenever there's rain. Y estoy aquí para pedirles que pongan atención en esas calles. And I would like you to pay attention to those streets. Porque están muy afectadas por la por las lluvias. Because they are very affected by the flood. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you. Y les quería dejar esta. And she wants to leave this to you. Gracias. Necesito intérprete. Okay. Buenos días a todos. Buenos días. Good morning. Mi nombre es Blanca Flores. My name is Blanca Flores. Con líderes campesinas. With um, farm worker Me. leaders. Y este día vengo a abogar por la transportación. Today I'm here to ask you about transportation. Sobre todo la de aquí de Berkesfield, que cuando cambiaron las rutas, se vieron afectadas muchas familias para ir a sus trabajos especially here in Bakersfield, that were affected with the rain. Many families were not able to get to work. Tienen que levantarse cuando entran a las seis de la mañana y tienen que ir a las cuatro de la mañana caminando. Whenever they have to go into work at seven, they have to get up at four in the morning to walk. No tienen transportación. They don't have transportation. Y están corriendo peligro. And they're taking risks. Uno, un testimonio, una amiga mía, eh, la semana pasada casi la matan los perros porque tiene que irse caminando a su trabajo. Okay. One of my friends said that um, she was almost killed by dogs because she has to go to work walking and the quiere, dogs attacked her. Y queremos que la ruta las extiendan sábado y domingo hasta las 8 de la noche porque no hay transportación después de las 6, 7 de la noche. Entonces... Es muy necesario de que nos ayuden con esto para que amplíen la transportación a más altas horas o los fines de semana más tarde del horario. And we would like transportation to extend our hours. Um, there's no transportation after 7.30 and we would like to have transportation later at later times. 
también les doy las gracias, pero que nos tengan intérprete, puesto que nosotras venimos aquí a abogar. And I would like to thank you to have it by having an interpreter because we're here to advocate por todas las necesidades de la comunidad for all the needs of our community. Y las personas no vienen porque no tienen quien les traduzca y no entienden nada de lo que se está hablando. And many people don't come because they don't understand and they don't understand what's happening and they don't have anyone to come and translate for them. Les doy las gracias y ojalá que nos ayuden con la petición. And I thank you and I wish you would hear my petition. Feliz día. Have a nice day. Buenos días, mi nombre es Marta Gutiérrez. Good morning, my name is Marta Gutiérrez. Um, y, y venía a decirles si podrían hacer o ayudar a la comunidad, a la ciudad de Bequesville y el sur de Kerr. Yo soy representante de líderes campesinas okay. del sur Kerr. Okay, and I would like to, I came here to beg you to please help our south side of our city I'm representative of Líderes Campesinas of South Kern. Y quería pedirles del alumbrado de la ciudad de Bakersfield. I would like to ask you for help with lightning in our streets in Bakersfield. Sí, en Bakersfield, la ciudad de Bakersfield y el sur Kern. In the city of Bakersfield and South Kern. Uh, porque hay muchas calles muy oscuras. There's many streets that are very dark. A veces casi uno atropella a la gente. Sometimes we almost run over people. Y yo digo que hace falta alumbramiento y, y que no tiren tanta basura en la calle. And we need more lighting and also clean up our streets um, from trash. Por falta de alumbrado yo pienso que es el tiradero de basura de muebles y toda la cosa. And I think it's because of the lack of lighting that people dispose of um, trash and waste and furniture. Uh, y también quería pedirles de favor si pueden ayudar o hacer una transportación para los trabajadores del campo que antes lo había y ahora ya no lo hay y para que no pasen tantos accidentes con las personas que hay veces que se matan nomás por, no sé, Okay, and I would like to see if there's a way you can help with transportation for, for farm workers to get to work. There used to be an assistance. Um, okay. Oh, um, van pools that used to take farm workers to the fields, and now there is no van pool system to assist the farm workers. And sometimes they have accidents. Pienso que es todo y muchas gracias y este y les deseo un feliz día. And this is all and I thank you very much. Have a happy day. Mm -hmm. Gracias. Good morning. My morning. name is Dora Hernandez Hara. I'm from the Mexican colony in Shafter and we're one of the communities that's grossly underserved. Um, I have a petition for the Kern County Board of Supervisors to allocate funding to uh, several services that we are in dire need of and to ask our supervisor to actively seek funding for these needs. Um, one of the major ones is infrastructure. Uh, Refugio will be talking about traffic control and safety and roadways. Uh, one of them, we have curb and gutter, but a lot of our indigent uh, population do, cannot afford to install sidewalks, so we are in dire need of funding for that through the county and to make it accessible to the handicapped and the elderly. Uh, my mom is 92 years old and we, when she tries to take a walk in the community, pushing her chair, she has to walk in the street because we have no other place for her to walk. Um, we need to improve our lighting system and uh, try to seek funding through the the county for that we have a county service area so we are funding that right now uh, and we need something uh, some kind of funding for housing rehab programs and an affordable home buyer program and we are in dire need of recreation for for our young and elderly alike uh, community center park uh, something our children our youth play in the streets and we have a dire 
we have a very big problem with a lot of uh, speeding uh, drivers, and that's the only place that our kids can play in on the street. Um, along with the safety issue, uh, we have mediocre service from uh, the Sheriff's Department, so we would like to um, find out if there's any way that you could, uh, I don't know, subcontract with the Shelter Police Department so they could serve service our community and uh, to help us attack the drug problem, which is very prominent in, uh, in our community. Another big problem is animal control. Um, we have to get service from the center on Fruitvale Avenue when the animal shelter for Shafter is just uh, about a half a mile down the road. So we would like to find out if you could make that uh, facility available to residents of the Mexican colony so we could utilize their services. Um, there was an incident where there was a pit bull running rampant and he, he was chasing the residents and he almost bit one of my friends. And it took us months to have uh, that animal uh, contained, you know, taken to the shelter. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, we have a lot of problems with animals. They come and dump their uh, unwanted dogs and cats and there's no way that we can get rid of them. Uh, we can't use that animal control. So that is one of the things that we would like you to check into, if you can. Thank you for your attention, and I have this petition for the board. Supervisor Perez, would you like to speak to this person? Uh, thank you so much. I wanted to just briefly address the folks that came forward today, people that have uh, been uh, working very hard, passionately, and authentically in the district that is no longer technically mine because of our redistricting suit that occurred. Uh, but I thank you so much for your passion, your love, your authentic care and devotion to uh, all people in Kern County, but in particular, the most disadvantaged communities. So I want you to know that I will remain your ally. I am your friend. I will continue to help you in any way that I can in conjunction with your new supervisor. Uh, and uh, at some point, we will give a reporter update where we are on the flooding crisis, uh, funding that we have been seeking in a very sophisticated and deliberate manner with many entities in Kern County that I'm quite proud of. So uh, we'll give you an update on that shortly. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate you being here. And I want you to know my door is always open to you. And I will work with your new supervisor very closely uh, to ensure that nothing falls uh, through the cracks or uh, that in any way there's any problem in the transition with this historic change that we all have to embrace and make the most of. Thank you. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Refugio Valencia. Good morning. My name is Refugio Valencia. Yo soy un organizador comunitario para Centro en Raza, Pobreza y el Medio Ambiente. I'm a representative of Centro y Raza, Pobreza y el Medio Ambiente, y el Medio Ambiente which means uh, for the center of the Raza and, uh, uh, and the environment. Yeah, and the center of race, poverty, and the environment. Okay. Okay. Environment. Uh, eh, yo estoy trabajando con la comunidad que acaba de uh, mencionar la señora Dora. Es uh, la colonia mexicana en Shafter. I work with the community that uh, Ms. Dora spoke about in Shafter. Uh, esta, esta comunidad yo creo que para ustedes es nueva. Nunca la habían escuchado. Maybe you've never heard about our community. It's probably new to you. Y hemos estado escuchando parte de las necesidades que tiene cada una de las comunidades que se han mencionado hoy esta mañana. And we've been listening to part of the needs that some of the communities have been mentioned in this morning. Uh, mejoras en los parques. Better men in the parks. Mejoras en las calles. In the streets. Y en esta comunidad, en la colonia mexicana, and in this community, in the Mexican community, no es diferente. It's también, not different. También tiene las mismas necesidades. It also has the same needs. Solo una que es muy diferente. There's only one that is very different. Ellos ni siquiera tienen un parque. They don't even have a park. Y aparte también, como se ha estado mencionando de la seguridad, and also, as it has been, been mentioning uh, about the security and the safety. 
la comunidad de la colonia mexicana ha estado mencionando la inseguridad. The, col the Mexican colonia has been talking about the insecurity. Porque en esa, en esa área se concentra mucha, mucha drogadicción. Because in that area, a lot of drug addicts concentrate in that area. ¿Por qué? Porque esta comunidad ni siquiera, ni siquiera tiene alumbrado. Because in this community, there's no street lining. Sí lo tienen, están los postes, pero no trabajan bien. We have the posts and the lights, but they don't work. Y la avenida que cruza por esta comunidad la usa el tráfico como si fuera un freeway. And the street that goes through this community, people use it as a freeway. No conocen una patrulla de policía, de sheriff, de highway patrol. They don't see a police car, a sheriff's car, or a highway patrol car. Entonces esta, esta situación es, es de alto riesgo ahí en, en, por la Burbank Avenue. Therefore, this community in Burbank Avenue, it's a very dangerous community. Y, y como mencioné, no hay ni siquiera un parque. Los niños que hay ahí, que son muchos, juegan la, en las yardas de sus casas a un lado de esta avenida, la Burbank, que, que es uh, transitada a velocidades muy altas. Therefore, children who live in this community have to play in their front yards because there's no park and the cars speed by that street. Y eso no me lo platicaron ellos. Cuando, cuando yo he tenido reuniones con ellos, he visto cómo pasa el tráfico de recio. When I've had meetings with this community, I see how fast the traffic flows through, through that street. Creo que el supervisor de este distrito y la comunidad tienen mucho que trabajar. I believe the supervisor for this community and the, and the community have to work very hard. To improve it. Quiero reconocer al señor Ryan also por estar trabajando con nosotros en este asunto. I would like to thank Mr. Ryan for working for us, with us. Y, y le voy a le voy a pedir que le rasque a la a la caja de a la caja de los de los recursos para que uh, puedan llevar un pequeño parque a esta comunidad. And I would like him and the supervisors to scratch a little bit on that box of funding so they can come and help us in our community. Okay, gracias. Yo creo que vamos a seguir por aquí. Thank you, and I think we'll be around. Mm -hmm. Gracias. Are there any others? Alguien más? Okay, we're going to close the public comment portion of the meeting and return to the board for uh, comment and actions. The CAO Alsop, would you like to say something first? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. I'll be quick. I just wanted to um, basically say, as you know, I, um, you know, these are all real issues um, for for these communities, um, and it, the challenge is daunting in some parts of our county. Uh, it, it is not easy to address all the need that we have across 8,000 square miles in California's third largest county by area. Um, it, it's daunting. I think if there were uh, students sitting in the room, uh, this would be a good uh, sort of demonstration of what government does. And, you know, the pot that we have to fund all of these things is smaller than it was before, and we're challenged. Um, but with that said, I do want to say that any time this group uh, asked to meet uh, with our office, and I know that you all know this, uh, we meet with them. Uh, in fact, we've had several meetings, right? Many. And we'll, have, we'll continue to have uh, many more. And uh, we talk about the issues. Uh, there has been considerable investment, uh, I'd like to say, in, in that area, uh, in, in my time, uh, that, that started before I got here, but sort of investment that I became aware of, uh, our director of public works and speak to the investment that has been made in, in uh, walkability and in sidewalks and in, in uh, infrastructure down there. It's been considerable. I know that there's been at least a couple of million dollars spent on flood to address flood issues in that area just the past uh, fiscal year. Uh, we are in the process of uh, putting 
uh, really redoing three parks uh, thanks to Supervisor Perez uh, prior to the, the change in districts. But three parks in the area, Rexland Acres is getting uh, new playground surface, new shade structures, new surface for basketball courts. Uh, uh, all the sand is being replaced with wood chips and they're getting uh, uh, a dedicated staff for graffiti abatement. Greenfield Park, uh, we're replacing playground surfaces, getting new shade structures, replacing the sand. Uh, we are retrofitting a parking lot that is abused by race cars and people doing donuts and stuff uh, with speed bumps and wheel stops, uh, dedicated staff for graffiti abatement. Lamont Park, we're replacing playground surface, adding shade structures, uh, new surface for basketball courts, uh, wood chips. This isn't uh, meant to say we're doing everything that, that it is you need, but it's meant to, to be a signal, I think, from the board to you that we understand the things that you are um, advocating, as we've said before. Uh, we are, these projects are going to be done in a month to a month and a half. Uh, we will do more if you want a soccer park in that area. I told you how we can get there. Let's, let's do it. Let's do a soccer park. Let's get together, create a plan, and figure out how uh, we go forward. But you can't go forward without a plan, and we uh, have uh, committed to talking with you about that. Spray park, that's a great idea out in that area. You really need it. And let's talk about a plan to do that. Let's, uh, once we have a plan, then we can find out how to fund it. Maybe we can get some partners to help us out with that. But we're, we're uh, prepared to talk to you all about that. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say is your board in the last budget demonstrated your, uh, I, I thought during uh, the uh, a fiscal crisis, extraordinary effort to set aside $2 million in one-time funding, capital funding uh, for parks. And that was a signal from you that uh, you get it and you understand that parks are important to quality of life. Uh, most, I think you'd be challenged to find areas of this county that are not disadvantaged. Uh, the entire county, as far as I can tell, qualify for Cal of Iro Screen 3.0. The vast majority of the county qualifies for it. Um, most of this county is disadvantaged. Uh, most of what we do as a county, our business is dealing with the disadvantaged as the safety net. But uh, your board set aside $2 million in funding. Uh, Gustavo has asked and uh, Ms. Ms. Leal has asked, how are, we, how are we spending that money? And I tell them, uh, we don't know yet. Uh, that money was specifically by your board set aside and is being used to leverage uh, millions of dollars more in state grants as we speak. Uh, there is a parks bond that uh, just passed. Uh, this $2 million that was set aside could turn quickly into $12 million. Uh, we have current grant applications out with the state uh, for uh, another 500,000. So we're using it to build on it so that we have a pot of money to go to to make some real investments in our parks. So I, with that, I'll leave it to you. Supervisor Couch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I don't know if all of them, every speaker was talking about an issue that was in the fourth district, but almost all of them, I think, were. And um, based on the, uh, what Supervisor Perez was speaking to, the recent uh, redistricting, I want you to know that I view that and all the issues that you brought forward today um, as a real challenge. And I want you to know that I have been, I agree with you that Lamont needs, specifically Lamont, um, there's, there's lots of places that need, need help, but I, we have been through that. We drove out there very early on when we knew we were going to be redistricting, and I think in a matter of minutes we counted 145 potholes. I mean, it was, it, to me it was almost like a war zone. It was literally the worst road system in the county, I think, in, in, at least in a pretty small area. And we have attempted to, you're right, those patches on those, on those potholes are not meant to be um, a forever fix, and they, they would never will be. We've attempted to, to make a little bit of an impact uh, out there. But what I want you to know is we have some ideas um, that we will be, be bringing forward to you, and we want your 
uh, we want to explain them to you and answer your questions about them and get your input on them. Um, but specifically, following up on what Mr. Alsop just said, specifically on roads and on parks, could I get, is Mr. Pope here today? Could you pop up to the microphone for just a moment? And I, all I really need you to do is, I want to ask if you would be willing to do this. Could you come back to us um, in a few weeks or a month or so and just sort of lay out all of the, addressing all the concerns you just heard, lay out all the things that have recently been done that may be in the progress and some other projects that you have scheduled but you, no one has seen them yet. So people can expect. Through the chair's supervisor couch, I'd be glad to do that and okay. I'll uh, give a brief report on the need that's out there throughout the county. Okay, and then I'd like to work with you on, my staff and I are putting together a few ideas, but we're gonna need to run those by the professional staff to make sure they're actually good ideas. Um, so with you and your staff, Lorelei and the CAO, I would, I would love if we could come up with, as Mr. also says, before we run out and start spending a lot of money on things, we need a plan. And how do we fund them and what specifically are we funding first? Um, I would love to put that in place and I would like to do it very quickly if we could. So we yeah. heard you, thank you Mr. Pope. We heard you and uh, I look forward to trying to address each of the concerns that you just brought up. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Uh, Chairman, if you just need a motion to um, adopt the preliminary budget, uh, I'd make that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Couch. And, and, and the reason for that motion is we need a, a budget in place as of June 30th. It's not that we didn't hear your concerns, but we have to have a spending plan in place. Uh, and this is the preliminary budget for that. We will be adopting the final budget towards the end of August. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's an important clarification that we are compelled by state law to have in place an adopted budget then we can adjust that budget as we go forward, but we must have that in place by the end of June, which is just a few days from now. So thank you for that clarification, Supervisor Couch. Supervisor Perez. Thank you, Chairman. And thank you again for the remarks on the parks. Uh, I have every faith that your new supervisor will pursue all of this to the fullest based on what I'm seeing and all of the energy coming out of uh, this new process. So I'm excited and encouraged about the future. Uh, if you recall in Lamont, we raised private dollars to fix up Lamont Park. It was the first step of a grant process in order to find different sources of funding because the county simply doesn't have a lot of the money to do a lot of this. But it doesn't mean we don't have some money that can't be leveraged and matched throughout the state and even at the federal level. So when we, went, when we raised 40,000, uh, Tahone gave us 10,000, Chevron gave us 10,000, PG&E, a number of folks came in and said we wanna help build up this park. We raised $40,000. We got a matching grant, and as soon as we got the ball rolling, uh, we ended up getting a federal grant for lighting and walkways and s making that park beautiful. We replaced all the playground equipment. We put in um, child safe uh, gear and even, even uh, equipment for disabled kids at that particular uh, park. Uh, not that all of them are disabled kid friendly, but some of it is. And so we did that by joining in the federal dollars, the state dollars, and then of course a county match, but a lot of private dollars as well. So I wanna thank uh, Patricia, Gustavo, uh, who continued to improve the process of addressing your government, asking for a better and more productive relationship with your government, and in making relationships with the people like Craig Pope and Laura Lai, and of course Ryan Alsup who I think has been extraordinary in meeting with the community and engaging the community. Everyone I know who meets with him says they feel listened to. They feel as though he cares about their concerns. And Ryan, I am so grateful for that. Thank you for being that face for the county, uh, recognizing the all times, uh, all too often, brutal news that we don't have a lot of money to spend on this. But when we're smart and when we have a plan, we can leverage what we have, private community members who care about this community but need to be engaged and given opportunities to do more for the community. I think uh, we are remarkably generous in this regard. So again, thank you. I feel very confident in this process moving forward. None of us will get everything we ask for or want, but this is the healthiest relationship I've seen between activists, passionate members of the community, who live and breathe uh, finding results for the community and of course your government. So I'm um, very encouraged. I think it will continue to improve again to your new supervisor and uh, to our CAO. Um, I'm excited about what the future holds, so thank you. 
You just punched in again. Did you mean to do that? Sorry, Chairman. I guess I'll second uh, Supervisor Couch's motion. Thank you. Rar la caja de dinero. Scratch the box of money. Mr. Uh, Valencia, that was a very good comment. We will scratch the box of money. <laughs> he's, he's showing us how to scratch the box of money. Very good. So we have a motion and a second. Are there any other comments before we proceed with the vote? Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Muchas gracias. Next is item number 31, which is a proposed assessment advance agreement uh, with the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority. Uh, and who, who is going to initiate that discussion with us? Mr. Alsop, do you have a comment to make regarding item number 31 before we proceed with, uh, with Mr. Uh... I, I don't, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. I was uh, looking the other way. Uh, no. Uh, Alan Christensen, Assistant CEO in, in uh, our office, will handle this. Mr. Christensen, could you please proceed? Is this on? There it is. Um, uh, Chairman Maggard, uh, members of the board, Alan Christensen with the CAO's office. Uh, this item before you is... Um, uh, well, first of all, let me say that the, the county is a participant in uh, the Kuyama uh, Groundwater Basin Authority and the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority, as we have territory in both, uh, county territory in both of those basins, <clears throat> groundwater basins. Uh, both those agencies uh, were recently formed uh, via state law. Uh, the Sigma law required these uh, groundwater sustainability agencies to be formed. Uh, both those agencies are incurring costs related to develop of a groundwater sustainability plan or GSP as required by state regulations. You're going to get lots of alphabet soup here. Uh, Sigma is the, uh, um, is the, is the groundwater law uh, for short. Your board has supported these efforts uh, in the, both these basins in both time and staffing, uh, staffing and funding, uh, pardon me, <clears throat> to help them uh, implement the new regulations. Uh, at this time, the agencies are assessing their members and asking for uh, funds to, do, to pay for the uh, GSP or groundwater sustainability plan. Um, the estimated total fun funding that is proposed uh, today is from, from the county's general fund is $538,889 in the current fiscal year, fiscal year 2017-18. The funding would come from reserves in the general fund. First, the, the, the first basin is the uh, Kuyama Basin Groundwater Authority. Uh, a portion of, a uh, very small portion of Kern County is in that basin. That land is primarily uh, grazing land. There are also some agricultural companies that operate uh, in uh, the basin. Uh, the Kuyama Basin GSA consists of the counties of Kern, uh, Santa Barbara, Ventura, and San Luis Obispo County, uh, and in addition to some smaller agencies, uh, local ones. Uh, the GSA is receiving grant funds from the state, from the Department of Water Resources, to offset the costs of the GSP. Uh, however, there is still a shortfall, and so the members are assessed some amounts uh, to uh, cover the remaining uh, balance of cost. Kern County's contribution uh, assessment is $38,889 and is requested so that the uh, Kuyama Basin can meet its cash flow uh, needs, uh, which are significant. This one-time payment represents the final financial commitment from the board for this basin. Uh, the Indian Wells Groundwater uh, Authority is, uh, of which a county, the county is a member uh, hired a, consult a general consulting firm, an engineering consulting firm to, with expertise to coordinate and prepare a groundwater plan and uh, funding to pay for that consultant and administration comes from three sources currently. The initial contributions from members, the, the five members uh, of that uh, agency of 75000 each and then in addition a, a, a DWR or Department of Water Resources grant um, from to the county of $250,000 and an advance uh, from the Indian Wells Valley Water District um, of $500,000. So they've had funding 
but that funding is, uh, is running dry, uh, is, has virtually run out or will in a few months. Uh, the grant from DWR is paid on a reimbursement basis. Well, let me, let me back up. There's an additional grant that's coming from uh, the state for Proposition 1 funds. Uh, that, that funding will not be available probably until the first of the year, or at least reimbursements coming back from the state until the first of the year. Um, in fact, our experience with DWR is it can take five to seven months to get reimbursed from the current grant that we receive uh, for, uh, from DWR. So uh, that, that um, revenue source is slow in coming. The, um, the uh, proposal we have before you today is to, uh, for an initial $500,000 advance to close the funding gap created by the delay of, um, uh, of an extraction fee. So the other um, revenue source that's available that is, that is being worked on in the Indian Wells Valley is an extraction fee or a pump fee. The first reading for that pump fee was, was um, had on uh, last Thursday and we anticipate that that will uh, be in place soon. So there's some belief that uh, these funds, uh, if loaned from the county, the $500,000 would be repaid. Um, but uh, the timing of those, those funds is, um, is, will be again several months. And so um, the surety of that has, has caused us to treat this advance uh, as, um, as a contribution rather than a loan. And so it is, it is considered a contribution. Um, in addition, the, um, as I mentioned, there's a $1.5 million grant from DWR. Again, that's slow in coming. The proposed advanced uh, assessment advance agreement with the Indian Wells Valley Ground Water Authority has been prepared by County Council and establishes the purpose and payment mechanism for funding for the funding capital advance. The budgetary action for this item is to cancel the designation for infrastructure account 2156 in the general fund and establish appropriation in the special services budget unit account 7,500 in the amount of $538,889. Therefore, it's recommended that your board approve the proposed assessment advanced agreement with the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority and cancel the designation in the general fund, authorize the auditor controller to process the specified budgetary, budgetary adjustments and accounting transactions, and authorize the chairman to sign the agreement with the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Do any board members wish to comment or ask a question before we go to the public? Are there any members of the public that would like to make comment to us with regard to item number 31, this proposed assessment advance agreement with the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority? I don't see anyone indicating as such, so let's return to the board. Are there questions or comments by the board? Yes. Supervisor Gleason. That's me. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Ms. Christensen. My understanding of the, uh, let's talk about the Indian Wells Valley piece, is it's a $500,000 authorization, meaning we're not transferring money out. We're just, al we're just having that money available in case uh, the Groundwater Authority needs it in order to uh, manage its cash flow issues until a pump fee has been established and we have incoming revenue. Is that correct? Uh, that's, that's correct, although I'd, I'd say, I'd go a little further to say that it is likely to be drawn upon uh, right. within the next few months. So um, let's talk about that uh, pump fee. I want to instill some confidence in this board that uh, the plan is, it's more than a hope. I mean, there is a plan that we have in place that uh, should the Groundwater Authority draw down this, uh, what do you saw, call it a contribution or a loan? You should call it a contribution? We call it an advance, an assessment advance. Yeah. Okay, so we have a pumping fee, a volumetric uh, fee uh, that we have as are in the process of establishing an ordinance to charge water users to build up a revenue in order to offset these costs and repay this contribution. So we had a first reading of an ordinance last week uh, to establish a $30 per acre foot uh, pumping fee on uh, water that's extracted by our major non-de minimis users in the valley, of which I think there's like 71 players. Um, so we are in the process of establishing that, that ordinance. 
That ordinance requires a first reading, which we had. It will require an informational meeting, which we have scheduled for early July. We'll have a second reading and adoption of that ordinance in, in our July meeting. And then um, uh, following that, there's a, pro there's a waiting period for 30 days before we can actually start collecting. So we're anticipating that, that pumping fee to be uh, in effect uh, adopted in July and then revenues established sometime in the September timeframe. I'm guessing September, maybe October. So uh, the uh, vote for a, uh, it did, this is not without issue and I need the board to be completely uh, aware. Uh, the vote for the initial reading of that ordinance was four, oh, and one. There was the city that was abstain that abstained from the vote. So it was not unanimous, uh, but it was, there was no votes against it, uh, establishment of that ordinance. It's a difficult cultural issue that we are managing in the Indian Wells Valley. There are, uh, there are forces up there that are opposed uh, to this um, pumping fee. They're opposed to Sigma. Uh, they're really no logic behind their opposition other than a, um, a steadfast belief in um, themselves, and they don't uh, recognize the state's authority to impose regulation on their use of water. And they obviously don't um, uh, understand uh, the dilemma that the Indian Wells Valley is faced with. So there is headwinds to what we're doing and to the success of our ordinance, and that's why you used the term hopeful in our plan to um, uh, pay back this loan. I, I'd say it's significantly more than hopeful. I think it's, it's a reality. I'm not worried about it. I just need the, the board to be fully uh, aware of um, the, the climate that we're dealing with up there so that we can make the best decision and protect the, uh, the treasury of the Kern County. I'm fully in support of uh, this um, contribution and I will make a motion to adopt um, staff's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have a motion. Are there Second. any other questions by other members of the board? Supervisor Couch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The question is, and I, I think Supervisor Gleason is right. I think it is highly likely that that's what's going to happen. Assume for a second that it doesn't. I'm just public ought to know what the what what are our options? What's the next step if that doesn't happen? What. Um, through chair. I don't think they're good ones. Yeah. But, okay. Through your chair, uh, super, uh, Supervisor Couch, um, you would know pretty quickly uh, within within 30 days whether the the um, ordinance to pass a fee passes or not. From today. And then, but if so, if that were to pass, it's just a collection. The the uh, the risk then is collection of the fee. Right. So you could always have some holdouts that you know we're gonna you know, pitchforks and and uh, Torches, and you know, you're not, you're not going to assess this. I don't know how they would be able to do that. Uh, if it were not to pass, um, I think uh, the good news is that um, uh, if the board felt uh, uncomfortable with that, they could they could come back and have discussions with the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority to to, to make some changes. They, they will not need to draw on the cat these cash reserves right away. That's what I wanted to know. Thank yeah. you. And I'll second your motion. Thank you. Supervisor Scrivener had already seconded the motion. Yeah. So thank you, Supervisor Couch. Any other questions by board members? Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you. Next is item number 32, which is a proposed urgent urgency ordinance amending section 17.32.026. A number of sections. Uh, Mr. Nations, would you please give us a brief explanation so we can uh, proceed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Deputy Kender Graham from my office has been uh, deeply involved in this and is heading up this effort, and she's going to make the presentation. Ms. Graham. Thank you. Um, on November 15, 2016, your board enacted Ordinance G8670, which repealed and added new chapters to Title 17, which is the um, Code, code of Building Regulations. Prior to the adoption of Ordinance G8670, Chapter 17.32 of Title 17, um, which is the Kern County Fire Code, contains sections involving illegal fireworks, penalties for illegal fireworks, and social host liability. 
Ordinance G8670 effectively repealed all of Chapter 17.32 and replaced it with a new Chapter 17.32, which inadvertently uh, removed any reference to illegal fireworks, social host liability, and penalties for use of illegal fireworks. There was no intent on the part of the Kern County Fire Department, and it is believed there was no intent on the part of your board to remove and or revise such sections. Due to the widespread use of illegal fireworks during and around the 4th of July holiday, it is imperative that the inadvertently removed sections in the fire code be reinstated immediately so that the fire department can continue its enforcement activities related to the use of illegal fireworks during and around this 4th of July holiday. Your board has the requisite authority um, pursuant to government code section 25131 and 25123 to immediately upon introduction adopt an urgency ordinance for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, and safety. In light of the foregoing and, um, and considering the potential for fires, injury, and death from the use of illegal fireworks, um, there is an immediate need and it is prudent to enact an urgency ordinance reinstating language regarding illegal fireworks and administrative penalties for multiple time offenders and social hosts, which was inadvertently repealed during adoption of Ordinance G8670. Therefore, it is recommended that your board introduce the proposed urgency ordinance, waive the reading, make findings, um, pursue, uh, that further environmental review of the proposed urgency ordinance is not needed and or exempt pursuant to sections 15060C2, 15061B3, 15307, 15308, and 15321 of the state CEQA guidelines and enact the proposed urgency ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any members of the public that would like to make comment regarding this matter? I'll return to the board then. Colleagues, what is your pleasure? Move staff's recommendation. Second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you. Next is item number 36, which is a response to a request for a status report on the operational administrative analysis of the Kern County Fire Department. We're joined by our chief, Brian Marshall. Good morning, chief. Good morning, Chairman Maggard, members of the board. Give me one moment here. Uh, this item is an update uh, on the operational and administrative analysis of the Kern County Fire Department. On January 9, 2018, the Center for Public Safety Management presented to your board the final report for this operational and administrative analysis. 62 recommendations were made in five categories. It included organization, management, and personnel facilities and capital, planning and risk management, operations, dispatch and deployment, and lastly, training and prevention. The Center for Public Safety Management um, had a project methodology that we work with uh, to make sure that they uh, received the data that they needed. Uh, they did a thorough review of the department's organizational structure and deployment practices. Deployment is how we have the fire stations and the equipment to respond to emergencies. They did a detailed analysis of our response and workload, um, the busiest times of the day, um, busiest times of the week, how our fire stations responded to wildland fires. Uh, they spent a week here working with, uh, working and interviewing uh, fire department staff. They visited fire stations and really did a in-depth analysis uh, during that week. Uh, they spent a lot of time with county staff also in the CAO's office to uh, uh, verify and obtain uh, additional information. Their initial observations in the report were that the Kern County Fire Department was an excellent organization. We have dedicated personnel and we're committed to serve, and I highly agree with that. We have a very complex service uh, environment. Uh, that is very true. We cover 8,000 square miles, uh, metropolitan, small cities, rural, frontier area. And when we have an incident such as the Erskine fire, we deploy a lot of resources, not only from our fire stations, but our air and wildland division. Um, 
They determined there were no quick fixes uh, regarding our financial issues as presented in uh, the budget hearings. Uh, we do have a structural deficit uh, and a large part of that are pension costs. Uh, we do have the partnership efforts with Bakersfield City Fire Department, CAL FIRE, Hall Ambulance, who we interact with uh, almost on a daily basis. Uh, we are a contract county for CAL FIRE, so we protect the state lands here in Kern County. And we also uh, interact with the U.S. Forest Service on the Sequoia National Forest and the Los Padres National Forest. They did determine that our traditional management systems of the Kern County Fire Department needed to be reevaluated. So where we're at today, uh, we've completed a thorough review of all the 62 recommendations. Um, obviously, with our structural deficit, we've prioritized recommendations that immediately save money, and we're working on other recommendations. Um, so I'm going to discuss five priority recommendations that uh, will help guide us in the future. Again, as presented during the budget hearings uh, by the CAO's office, uh, we need to come up with a five-year plan to uh, make the fire department physically stable. So recommendation number nine was uh, moving towards cost recovery uh, for our hazardous materials program and consider seeking financial support from those companies within Kern County that store, transport, and incorporate hazardous substance within their operations. So unknown estimate at this time, uh, we're working with public health services. Um, I've talked to Matt Constantine, the director, uh, how we could integrate with the COOPA program. That's the inspections of hazardous materials and being able to bill through that program and then uh, money transferred to the fire department budget to support our hazardous materials response program. Uh, we're reviewing all the costs of our HAZMAT program uh, in order that we can develop some sort of methodology that we could put uh, forward for billing. Uh, once we get all of this worked out with public health and fire department staff, we will bring a fee structure and an implementation plan to your board. I expect that to be within the next two months. Recommendation number 16. Uh, this is uh, the aircraft rescue and firefighting program that we provide to Meadows Field and Inyo Current Airport. So Meadows Field, uh, we spend uh, $1.5 million a year annually to protect Meadows Field. That's under uh, FAA Part 139, that when you have passenger service coming into an airport, uh, our services are required. And in your current, uh, I'm, happily, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, on uh, July 10th, we'll be uh, terminating our agreement for our services at Inyo Kern Airport, and we've completed a, a lease to lease back the fire station that was uh, built with FAA grant funds. That's going to save us uh, $466,000 a year. So we'll be bringing that before your board uh, on July 10th. Uh, the fire department's also working with the county administrative office and Meadows Field executive staff to figure out some sort of implementation plan uh, where Meadows Field pays for our services um, from the Kern County Fire Department. Recommendation 34 was uh, the Kern County Fire Department should develop a comprehensive strategic, uh, strategic business plan. We're in agreement with that. Um, we did put $20,000 in our budget for this upcoming fiscal year in order to hire a consultant that will uh, help guide us through our plan is to use a uh, customer-centered strategic plan process, working through our accreditation um, partners. Uh, we want to get our stakeholders involved. If we're going to have any plan going forward in the future, uh, we need to get our stakeholders involved to make sure that we're servicing them the way they need to be serviced. Recommendation 52. Uh, <clears throat> The Kern County Fire Department should consider the implementation of an in-service fire company inspection fee. 
Right now, we only bill for fire prevention inspections performed by the fire prevention division. These are the inspections where our firefighters and the fire station go out and inspect buildings. The revenue estimate on that is $720,000 annually, and staff's working on a new fee structure to bring forward to your board. Again, that will be coming to your board within the next two months. Recommendation 53, um, utilization of civilian fire inspector, uh, fire prevention inspectors and plan reviewers in the fire prevention division. We have hired two civilians and deleted two fire engineers positions. Um, we were working on a plan and Mr. Alsop brought up some kind of out of the box ideas on what we can do in fire prevention that we hadn't looked at. So now we're kind of going back and, and looking at that to see if we can uh, streamline while meeting the needs of our customers. So we're working diligently on that one. Uh, there were recommendations regarding the uh, MOU with the Firefighters Union, and we're currently uh, in discussions with that labor group. <clears throat> Our next step, uh, we're going to continue implementing these priority recommendations that I've uh, brought forward. Uh, the ones that save money, we hope to get done in the next two or three months. Uh, the strategic plan, we'll go through an RFP process and, and bring in a consultant to work with that. We're continuing negotiations with the, the firefighters union. We're going to identify the next priority recommendations, and then I'll be before your board and the public on a monthly basis on the status of what we have uh, implementing and uh, the current plan. So my commitment, my staff's commitment, is we're going to continue to work uh, through the 62 recommendations. Um, we're going to work with the CAO's office and the firefighters union as we uh, make sure that we're all on the same page and we can make the fire department financially uh, stable for the future. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, therefore, it's recommended that your board uh, hear the presentation and receive and file. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any questions by members of the board before I go to the public? Any members of the public like to make comment to us about item number 32? No, I'm sorry, 36. 36, the Chief's report. <clears throat> Don't see anyone, so I'll return to the board. Supervisor Gleason. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks, Chief, this is a great first step. Appreciate it. So my understanding is that uh, every month you're gonna come to this board and you're going to uh, we're going to sit back and you're going to take piece by piece by piece of those 62 recommendations and you're going to either accept, reject them, tell us what you like, what you don't like, and we'll power through that and hopefully that will get you to um, where we want to be in terms of an effective, appropriately sized um, uh, organization that, that meets our uh, needs. So, so thanks. Supervisor Gleason, through the chair, exactly. We'll be before your board uh, on a monthly basis reporting uh, in depth on the 62 recommendations and where we are with them and how they're coming and uh, receive your board's guidance uh, on moving this project forward. Thank you. My guidance is going to be something like similar to this. I, I, I enjoyed what you said about hazmat. That's obviously, uh, I guess that's an easy fruit that you're going after. It seems to be, and you gave us um, no real dollars associated with that because you don't know, and you gave us no real dates. So I, I'm very interested in exactly what we're talking, a band of dollars that we're talking about that you're targeting, and then I, I'm really not, in order to achieve a goal, you need a date. And for each of these five recommendations, I didn't hear any dates. So I would like for you to put a date. Two months is not a date. You said the hazard plan should be in two months. You said the AAAF A uh, the off deal, uh, there were no dates, although you had completed the in your current um, transformation, which I applaud you and your uh, staff on. Your strategic business plan, you said something about an RFP. Do we need to do an RFP for a strategic business plan, or do we have the skills and talents within in-house to do that? Do you have an answer to that question? Uh, I would have to check with purchasing supervisor Gleason to make sure that we follow all of the purchasing rules, but we can bring that forward on July 10th and give your board uh, the exact plan 
for the consultant. You also talked about stakeholders. You want to involve your stakeholders in building your business plan. That sounds really good, but I don't understand it. What stakeholders and who are they, what are they, and how are they going to contribute to the betterment of your plan? Supervisor Gleason, through the chair, uh, one uh, agency that, or one group of stakeholders that we work with is the Cattlemen's Association. Um, they uh, graze their cattle on the wildland areas. When we, when we have wildland fires, we're burning up their profits, their food for their cattle. So when you talk about, when I talk about engaging stakeholders, I want to make sure that we're doing everything for all the different groups that we serve. Uh, again, we're a very complex organization. We protect cities, um, the frontier, rural areas, and I want to make sure we engage the stakeholder and, and, and get all of the stakeholder input so we do have a, a good plan going forward. Again, uh, that sounds good to me. I, I give that to you guys to figure out, but I'd be in, very interested on a date when you're going to have uh, the plan completed, a date you're gonna have the first meeting, who are your stakeholders, what, are you, what is your outlook for this? Is this strategic business plan the same five-year plan that you're talking about the CAO's office? Supervisor Gleason, through the chair, uh, it will incorporate portions of what a five-year uh, financial plan would be, but this is also, you know, how we, you know, interact with our customers. Like so it. It, it'll be both, and my commitment is we'll come back on July 10th at the next board meeting and answer your questions in depth. So I like it. I like the fact that not only is your, strategic, your, your strategy about building a financial plan to accommodate your budget requirements, but also the needs of the community, so that you can fold those in together and, and uh, really create something that is effective and it will serve uh, our county well. I, li I like that a lot. It's a bigger thing, but it drives me to another question about the five-year plan, and this is for the CAO's office. Are, are we, how are we arrived, how are we getting at that five-year plan? Can we talk a little bit about that five-year plan? Do, do we have, can you talk about that, Mr. CAO? Chairman Maggard, uh, Supervisor Gleason, uh, what I would say is that we uh, believe it's necessary for the fire department to have a five-year financial plan. So if uh, similar to your, your deficit, your, your four-year deficit mitigation effort in the general fund, uh, something similar for fire. So identifying, uh, you know, a five-year period and with each year, uh, what are the changes to be made uh, to save a certain amount of money? Um, you know, that plan would have projections. Uh, that plan would uh, consider all of these recommendations that the chief is talking about today. It would, it, it would uh, uh, include all of that stuff. Uh, I would say that this plan, financial plan, five-year, would be different than a business plan. Um, but they could be co-mingled, co um, but they are two really kind of distinct uh, efforts, and uh, I think that this five-year plan is something that we need to be uh, to ensure that, and and we b we believe it will be uh, ensure that the, the fire department is working super close. Uh, I put the word super in there purposely, super close closely with our office, um, just as if we were uh, part of part of the crew over there. Uh, and sitting in the office uh, looking at the financials. Uh, I think that uh, we want to help fire. We want to make them successful, obviously. Uh, and I think that would be a, uh, having a super tight relationship on development of that financial plan that's needed uh, must be there. So uh, do you agree with what he just said, Chief? Supervisor Gleason through the chair, yes, sir. Okay, so I like it too. It's a strategic plan, but part, a component of that strategic plan is gonna be the finances, and that finances is gonna be outlined in a five-year financial plan that is going to be created uh, when? Do we have a date on when that five-year financial plan will be submitted for approval? Does this board need to approve that financial plan, or does the chief approve that financial plan? Who approves that financial plan? Supervisor Gleason through the chair. Uh, there's quite a bit that would have to be done before we can get a, a good picture. One of the things that the chief's gonna have to do is complete his 
um, analysis of how he's going to incorporate um, the items uh, that he can uh, that are not negotiated type items. Uh, it is imperative, as you indicated, that there is a date structure to that uh, because we have to put it into a fiscal year time frame. Uh, and I'm sure that there's challenges for him on implementation so we can come up with ideas, that type of thing, but uh, having those set dates to meet um, both uh, statutory uh, driven time frames that we have to comply with, and then his time frame to implement it with his, in his organization. Uh, those are all in-depth conversations we still need to have uh, to really get a, a time frame when we get that five-year um, outlook. I think the numbers for us are fairly, um, we have a generally good idea of what cost are it's the it's the savings that, that he looks to to achieve and the revenue sources um, that are new um, that would be added to those numbers. So I don't think it would take long once he gets a, a good understanding of how he intends to move forward. Um, so I uh, I would hope in the next six to eight months that we would have a good idea um, of, uh, of what that plan looks like. Okay, so uh, who's driving the lead horse here? Is it the financial plan or the strategic business plan? Super what's, what's the lead horse? Supervisor Gleason, I think they go hand in hand, but the financial plan is the number one priority. Okay, so the financial plan, I heard you say six to eight months. Can we say December 31st? That's six months. Uh, Supervisor Gleason, through the chair, I'd ha I would really have to, to ask the chief if he thinks that, that that's doable. Uh, on our side, we're ready to go. So, Chief, is that doable? Yes, sir. Why, why does it take six months? Could it be four or six months okay by you? So, uh, I think that ties in with uh, the mid-year budget status, and we have uh, a good idea what our financials are uh, tracking for this upcoming fiscal year in the first six months and working on these. So I, I think by the end of the year, we can put together a plan and then bring it to your board right after the first of the year. Okay, thanks. Uh, number 52 was the, uh, which was your one, two, three, fourth recommendation was in-service company inspection fees. Uh, once again, um, I didn't see any dollars, any granularity with that item, and I didn't see any dates associated with that item. So I'm looking forward to, uh, I think you're, in, in terms of concept, you're going the right way here. I just wanna see it uh, broken down a parade rest so we can really understand it and the community can understand it. So um, what I'm looking for is, I, I like this idea of having these uh, monthly updates. What I would like to see at the next monthly update is I would like to see a spreadsheet put in front so that people can look at it and say, okay, last month we talked about these, and I'll be glad to sit down with you, Chief, afterwards and go over this. But last month, these were our five top priority recommendations. These are the dates assigned to completion of those five recommendations. These are the dollar values we're projecting to be associated with it. And then some way to judge the progress we are in achieving each of those five. And then introduce the next uh, group of uh, recommendations that you're developing. It doesn't have to be five, it can be 20, it could be two, whatever you wanna do. But it's going to be able to show us a roadmap of where we are, where we've been, and where we're going. And I think we can collapse that or, or funnel that all into some type of financial plan so that we can all understand and all build uh, a um, confidence in the fact that uh, we got this fire budget under control and we'll go in the right direction. Mr. Chairman, you've been very uh, gracious. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Supervisor Gleason. Supervisor Couch. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to echo a lot of what Supervisor Gleason just said. There's one thing I would like to focus on. Well, let me, let me back up with a comment. And let me just, and I say this with all due respect to you, Chief, because I think you are a outstanding fire chief. This is taking too long, in my opinion. And we did a study and we have a, an action plan, but now, and now we're having a, another plan. And we can plan this thing to death. <clears throat> um, the one, I don't know why I like this one, but it, it just makes sense to me because I think I've heard this, I think I've heard this from the rank and file in the fire department, and I've heard it from you. Although you, I think you have some reservations about it, which I understand, and that is the civilianization of the, uh, well, it's your plan check, all, all, those, all those folks. Um, 
So I want to make us, I don't like to get down in the weeds here, but I'm, I'm going to. Um, I think there's a, a need for a Lean Six Sigma project, and that is um, how a project, development project in the county, receives all of its approvals throughout all of the different departments. I don't know how that's done, but I've heard complaints from people who call a department, and oh, it's not here anymore, we've done our job, it's now gone on to wherever, and they sort of have to chase it down. And I would like us to, if as best we could, find a sort of a concierge service where once you turn in your plans, you've got one point of contact, and that person is gonna know where your plans are anytime you need to, to find out, any, anytime you have a question. Maybe that's already been done, and I don't know it, but um, in an effort to help the fire department do more civilianization, Ms. Oviat, you have a, you have some input on this? I do, but I forgot to answer all Okay, I'd be happy to have you jump in here. Um, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna ask more of the fire department with fewer people, then we ought to do our level best, we collectively do our level best to make sure that um, we're making that as easy as possible. And that's that particular item, the civilianization of those, those folks in your admin staff, is one that I, I recognize there are negative consequences to it. I'm gonna have people, allegedly, they're gonna call me and say, it's taking too long to get me through plan check, or it's, it's taking too long to do this, that, and the other. But um, I'm willing to take that heat in exchange for the savings that I think you're going to realize with that. Now, I don't know if you're on the same page as the, as the uh, union is. I don't know if that's a, I don't think that's an item that needs to be negotiated. I think that's something that is in under your, and I know you've done some of that, but I just want to encourage you, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about this, I want to encourage you to do more of that and do it as quickly as possible. And so, if you want to uh, provide some input that I'm sure will be of value because I may not know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think you do know what you're talking about. <laughs> However, uh, Lorelai Oviat, Director of Planning and Natural Resources, we work closely with the fire department. Obviously, we work closely with Building Inspection Division. We are right now embarking on our counter, which is one of the places these permits go through. I would be happy to coordinate this. We think highly of the way that the fire department does their permitting. We are uh, working on bringing a CELA online for planning and integrating it where the public could then publicly look to see where their permit is. So I would be glad to work. We work so closely with them already and we've already been in discussions. So I would be glad to volunteer my department and uh, work on this project. That would be awesome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Maybe I need to get more comfortable with it, what a strategic business plan is. What is it going to, what are the nuts and bolts of it? What is it going to have in it that we don't currently have? Supervisor Couch through the chair, I think it's going to wrap everything together and give, you know, direction uh, to the fire department uh, on where we're going. Again, meeting with stakeholders and, and figuring out, are we doing the right things? Are we serving their needs? Your example about development and how building permits, that's part of you know, our, our strategic plan. Are we serving our customers? The financial plan is going to be the nuts and bolts, how we make the fire department sustainable in the future. They all kind of wrap together using uh, the analysis. We're going through uh, accreditation, um, our insurance service review. It, it kind of wraps it all together and, and delivers it to your board, what we're doing, how we're doing it in our communities. Can I sum it up yes, <clears throat> me, from my feeble mind? Your business plan is gonna be how you're gonna, how and what services you're gonna deliver and how and to whom. Yes. And your financial plan is the types of changes the department needs to make to save money, for lack of a better term. Yes, sir. Okay. And if I'm wrong, tell me. I'm just, I'm trying to that, No, that's a, good, that's a good summary, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. I have a question regarding the consultant that you're proposing for 
the business plan development. Uh, Supervisor Gleason asked a question as to whether or not we had the in-house talent available to develop that plan without the use of a consultant, and you explained why uh, or how, how you would use the purchasing department to obtain one. You didn't say whether or not you think we have the in-house talent adequate to develop that plan on our own. So I'd like you to address that, and I'd like to have a comment from the CEO's office as to whether or not uh, what his thoughts are on that. Chairman Maggard uh, and members of the board, uh, I don't want the consultant to do the work for us. I want help in guidance, you know, making sure we stay on track, uh, looking at issues that, you know, we may not uh, be aware of in putting this plan together. Um, yeah, we do have in-house talent. We will be actively involved with it. But uh, I think using a consultant to help keep us on track, making sure we're covering all of our bases, makes the plan more, uh, more valuable. And I, I think it will just wrap up the entire project with the financial plan, the strategic business plan, and everything that we're doing. Thank you, Mr. Alsop. Do you, what are your thoughts regarding uh, whether or not an outside consultant is necessary for that purpose? And I'd like you also to address whether or not the chief has the spending authority to do that on his own, or does that question come before this board? Yeah, I, uh, Chairman Maggard, I think the chief could probably spend that money on his own um, to do this. Uh, my thoughts are, you know, I obviously think highly of county employees, and uh, I think we do have uh, folks that have the ability. I'm not that familiar with uh, the chief and his downline uh, to, to make any uh, determinations there. I'd, I'd leave it up to his, his judgment. I would say that uh, he might be, it sounds like on, on this business plan, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a, uh, you know, it's an 8,000 square mile county. He's stakeholder input. It sounds to me like the chief wants somebody full time, 24 seven, thinking about this business plan and helping him. So they're, that all they're doing is trying to um, get this thing uh, written up and done, as opposed to having somebody who might be doing something on staff also diving into this business plan. I, I don't know what, what your thinking is, but if your board, uh, 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 suggested to the chief that you didn't want him to go outside for a consultant. Uh, we would do all we could to um, provide staff support to him out of my office to try and uh, put this together. Thank you, Chief. How many employees do you have in your entire department? Chairman Maggard, we have uh, 500 firefighters. We have about 75 general employees. Uh, and then we run about 100 seasonal firefighters. 675 people approximately. I think we can find somebody who can dedicate themselves 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to make sure we're on task about this. So I have concerns about whether or not we spend another dime on a consultant and whether or not we should do that in-house. So before that's done, I'd like to, you to come back and talk to us about that. Any other questions from the board before we receive and file the report? Supervisor Gleason. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to emphasize that in the, the monthly presentation that you're going to bring forward to us, if, if we can't measure the change in your department, we can't judge its success. So it has to be uh, numbers in front of us to say where we are and where we've got to go and how far along the way we've gotten there and what dates associated with each task. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Do we, need a, do we need a motion? A motion to receive and file. I'd like to have a motion to receive and file. Thank you. Second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you. That concludes this morning's public agenda. We have matters to discuss in closed session, and we will reconvene here this afternoon at 2 p.m. Is there a motion that we, close, uh, that we uh, adjourn to closed session? So moved. We have a motion by Supervisor Gleason without objection, so ordered. Thank you very much. See you at 2 o'clock.